am doing an experiment, one of my favorite things. Um, I have done a lot of pieces, and I know a lot of other um, resin artists that have YouTube channels have done this before, where we take a um, chameleon or a chrome mica powder and dust it on the mold and then pour black on it. So I, and I've done that a lot, but I've been curious about what happens when you pour something other than black. So I have, this is from um, Island Micas and More. This is their Chameleon Chrome in Butterfly. So I'm using this and I'm just gonna dust it into these four molds. And then I'm gonna pour one with black. I'm gonna do one with white, one with clear, and then one, I'm gonna mix the mica into the resin before I pour. So I'm really curious what these are all gonna look like. I know the black one is gonna be brilliant and um, the colors are gonna be rich and deep. I don't know what the white or the clear are gonna look like because um, I haven't done that before and I don't know what will happen if I mix the mica into the resin. Is that gonna make it just as brilliant as the black? Um, I'd also like to try using different colors other than black, but I only have four molds. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to stick to today. Um, maybe in a future video I'll do different colors, but uh, we'll just do that. So I'll just um, do one of these and then I'll do the rest off camera. Um, I, Whenever I dust in a mold, I always use a brush that has natural bristles. These are sable. Um, if you use the cheaper brushes that have like polyester or some other artificial bristle type, you'll get a lot of static. But if you use the natural bristles, it's much less. There still is some static to deal with, but it's not as bad. So I just dip it into the mica powder and just brush it on. And I'm just trying to kind of spread it so there's not any loose powder sitting in any of these grooves. I'll put a link in the description for this mica powder. I have a bunch of their um, chameleons and I love them. They're just beautiful. Very, very vibrant. And these molds, I don't remember off the top of my head where I got them. Um, but I'll look and I'll put that link, I'll put that link in the description as well in case you guys want to grab these molds. They come in a set of four and each one's different. So kind of fun and they only use about two ounces of resin each. So they're a little less, uh, they don't use as much <laughs> as typical molds. Most of my res uh, coaster molds use three ounces, so it's nice to have <laughs> something that's not quite as uh, thirsty with the resin. All right, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take this over my trash can and um, tip it and like tap it because I wanna get the, the loose powder out. I'll drop it in the trash can. And the reason I do that is um, because any loose powder is gonna float and it won't matter so much because it's, it's going to float up, which is going to be the underside of the coaster. But I just like to get the, the loose powder out. All right, so I'm going to do the other three and then I'll be back. All right, all of the mica is on. It seems to flip from like a pinkish purple to a tealy green color. Pretty cool. All right, so I've mixed up my resin. I got eight ounces. Um, I have two ounces left in the big cup. I'm just gonna leave that clear. And then I have two ounces in each of these. So for my white and black, I'm just using the Mix-All. Grab little sticks. You could really use um, any white or black for this, but I decided to use these um, mix-all colors because they're not shiny. Um, 
you know, if I had used white mica powder or black mica powder, I don't know, that might have a different effect. I don't know, but I just want to be consistent, at least for this first experiment. So these, and I shouldn't say they're not shiny. You know, resin is shiny unless it cures on a matte surface, but they're not um, reflective, I guess is a better word for it. They're more like just regular acrylic paint almost. They're not paint. <laughs> they actually won't dry. Um, they're made to be added to things, but um, they have that same look as acrylic paint, kind of that matte, matte type of finish. But then of course you put them in resin, resin is shiny, so they're gonna end up shiny. All right, and then the mica. I'm probably gonna end up using all that I have left. I just got these little sample sizes to try out a while ago. Definitely gonna have to buy the full size now. <laughs> Get all that out of there. Okay. All right. All right, we'll start with the white. Um, let's see, does it matter which one I do which? I don't think so. All right, so I'm just gonna pour the white in this one. And these molds, this, this mold in particular has a lot of really tiny grooves, really thin grooves. So I chose a thinner resin for this project. This is um, Unicone. This is their crystal resin. And it's definitely on the thinner side. It's more watery. And it seems to get into little nooks and crannies real easily compared to some of the thicker resins. So you can see the mica is starting to float to the top. That's what those little gray things, gray streaks are on top. Mm, let's try and see if I can get any more in there. So I have just a tiny bit left in the cup, but it looks like it's domed. I don't want to overflow it. <laughs> All right, so we'll do the black next. I'm just gonna pour in the middle and let it kind of flow out just to help with the bubbles. Normally I would take my dotting tool and go into all of the little grooves, but I don't wanna scratch the mica out. So hopefully this resin is pretty good about bubble release. So I'm hoping that there's not too many bubbles. All right, then we'll do clear in this one. I've done some earrings when I have leftover resin and I've used clear. You know, I'll dust, uh, I'll dust the earring mold with an iridescent and then I'll pour the clear in. But the molds are so thin, you can actually see through them and the mica that I dust on just gives it a, just a hint of iridescence, but it's not real super visible. So I'm very interested to see what happens if it matters that this is thicker or that the mold has that, um, you know, textured pattern on it because the earring molds I use are just flat. Okay, last one. I'm already excited to unmold these. <laughs> I'm still boring. Oh, I just love this mica. Oh my gosh. I'm sure the camera is not picking up the super cool ripples and just 
all the fun stuff that's going on with this as I'm pouring. This is almost mesmerizing. I could just watch this on a loop and <laughs> just pouring. I'll bring you down for a close up in a second so you can see how the mica is floating. All right, let me just hit these. These are pretty full. I'm not gonna use my heat gun because I'm afraid I might um, push the resin right out of the mold. All right, so let me bring you down. Choose some different angles too. Look at that, isn't that cool? I don't think it's gonna cure that way because you know resin flows to the middle. But that looks super neat. All right, here's the clear. I'm trying to get somewhere where my lights aren't so reflective. You can see around the edge um, that loose mica that's floating, it's floating to the top. And it's just gonna gradually move towards the center because resin as it cures moves to the middle. Same thing is happening on the black one. And the white one. Let's see that cool shimmer. All right, so I'm gonna let these cure overnight and I'll be back tomorrow to demold. So I'll see you then. All right, it's the next day and I'm super, super excited to demold these. <laughs> All right, so we'll start with the first one. This is the one where I poured the resin with the mica powder in it. It's really pretty. So this is all the loose powder that floated to the top. Very very um, brilliant, very bold, very shiny. All right, that looks really cool. All right, so this is the clear one. You can see right through it. The underside actually looks pretty neat. Now let's see what the top looks like. So it's Definitely not as dark. And if I hold it up to the light, I can see through it. Um, now you can see my glove a little bit. I don't have a flashlight, otherwise I'd put it underneath. But um, it's still a really cool effect. It's just more subtle. All right, the black one. I'm guessing this one's gonna look like the first one. Again, you can see where that loose mica powder went. Yep. Same, I think, same level of intensity between these two. All right, and now the white. So this one I'm super curious about because if you look at the mica, it almost looks gray instead of having, you know, those brilliant colors. So I'm almost wondering if it's going to be gray. I don't know. We'll see. There we go. So it's definitely, um, it's somewhere in between these two, I think. And I know my camera is not picking it up. I'll have to try and bring the camera down for a different angle. Um, it's not, obviously it's not see-through, but I really don't feel like it has the same level of brilliance as these two. It's, it's lighter, it's more subtle. Okay, let me bring the camera down and see if I can get it from a different angle a little better. Mm, probably not really. <laughs> yeah. You can see some little bubbles in there. And that's because I didn't take my, um, my dotting tool and run it along the grooves. And I was in a little bit of a hurry. I didn't really spend a lot of time making sure the resin was bubble free, which I normally do, um, especially for pieces that I'm selling. This was just an experiment, so I wasn't quite as careful, but 
I don't know, it's, it's, the camera is definitely not picking up the difference. But, yeah, well, there you go. So that's, oh, here we can see through it pretty good. But yeah, that's something that I know I've been curious about. I know other people have asked about um, what happens when you use different color resin behind the chameleon. So there you go. All right. Well, if you thought this was a fun tutorial, or I guess it's an experiment, not a tutorial. <laughs> um, but if you thought it was fun, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel, like the video, share, all that good stuff. And I will see you next time. Take care.